So I get it. Oftentimes the forecast says one thing and does another. I was recently in that position last week when the forecast called for relatively dry conditions and instead dropped a load of rain on us and a clay-like road that we were traveling on. Uh, simply put, it was a muddy mess. Lucky for us, it was somewhat isolated, so we were able to move on, but I had to add tons of chain lube on my chain in order to just simply limp into a campsite that night. So as I was traveling home the next day, I was thinking, well, this bike is pretty dirty. And this is a good opportunity to share how I not only clean my bikes, but also my bike packing bags. So that is exactly what we're gonna do in this video. Let's do it. All right, so before I clean this bike, I just wanted to let everybody know that this video is supported in part by Salsa Cycles and the Salsa Cycles Journeyer, which is designed to be a gateway to a wide range of cycling experiences. Whether riding or racing gravel, going bike packing or loading up with racks and panniers to tour, or frankly, just riding around town, Journeyer's long and low geometry boosts stability, increasing rider confidence, all at a very inviting price point. So to learn more about Salsa's Journeyer, you can click on this card right here. And I also have a link in the description below. All right, so these are the items I use to clean my bikes and my bags. A sponge, brush, toothbrush, clean rag, dish and hand soap, and a bucket and hose. These are all things that are cheap and you should already have at home. If you don't, you can find most of these items in an automotive or kitchen section at your convenience stores. I first fill a bucket with water and no, hot water is not necessary. Well, some people think it is and it might work better. I hardly ever use hot water. I use my standard hose tap water at home. I then remove most of my bike packing bags and set those aside. This typically is my seat pack, my handlebar bag, and sometimes my frame bag, depending on if I plan on keeping it on or I guess how dirty the, the bike and the frame is. The drivetrain is typically a good starting point because when cleaning it, you will more than likely get your frame dirty. The drivetrain is also the most important part of your bike to clean and maintain, not only for longevity, but also to maximize performance of the bicycle. So I like to start here before my motivation fades. I'll add a bit of dish soap directly to a wet brush and start scrubbing the cassette, chain rings, and chain. If my drivetrain is really dirty, I tend to remove the cassette and chain and put it on the floor and do a clean and rinse and repeat technique. Dish soap will typically get the job done if you keep up with it, but sometimes a little degreaser helps cut some really dirty parts. So I keep clean streak on hand for really tough jobs. So once the drivetrain is clean, I'll move on just to the rest of the bike. And the easiest way to do this is to get your sponge wet and add a bit of dish soap to it. If the bike is as muddy as this or has mud caked to it, I'll spray off the bike with a very low impact setting on the hose or very low volume setting. The reason you don't want to use a high volume setting is because this will typically get water past seals that are trying to keep water out, such as your bottom bracket hubs and shock seals. Using a high volume setting will also place water inside your frame. And this will not only damage parts quickly, but also lead to rusting on the inside of some bikes, steel bikes for instance. So I always use a low volume setting and when in doubt, use the setting that is similar to spraying your bike with a water bottle. From here, I just stick to the back of the bike, clean the wheels, the tires, rear triangle, and move forward to the main triangle, fork, and so on. I try to pay attention to hard to reach areas and will even get a wet rag and try to scrub or even floss areas that need it, such as pivots on a bike or seat stays. After I scrub down each part, I'll get the hose and gently spray off the bike. Once I rinse it off, I'll double back and use the sponge on some of the spots that I missed before rinsing it off again. So one thing you might have noticed I didn't do was touch the rotors and calipers. And this is something you really do want to avoid doing because you do pose a risk of potentially contaminating your brake set when doing so. It's totally fine if 
dish soap or some grit and grime does contact the rotor and brake pads, just ensure that you rinse it off thoroughly. Then I typically try to leave the bike in direct sun to help the water evaporate. I know this is not as easy in some regions or climates, but I do know it helps dry things out and helps prevent water penetrating into the frame or bearings and helps prevent rusting. And there you have it, a clean bike. It's not that complicated and it definitely doesn't take special tools. A question I've always had is how long does durable water repellency or DWR last? And does cleaning a bag ruin the treatment? After chatting with a number of bag makers, DWR finish is actually pretty short lived. You can expect the DWR to last longer in areas that don't get as much water, obviously, but when a bag wets out, this means the DWR is typically no longer active. This can happen in wet conditions quickly. So if you've had the bag for a while, especially if you tend to ride the bike through wet conditions, it's probably safe to assume the DWR finish is no longer on the bag. Lucky for us, this is not the end of the bag's life because these are not fabrics we are wearing, but rather our bike is, meaning it is not nearly as uncomfortable to our bikes as opposed to us wearing them, like say a rain jacket. Now that I'm talking about this, I think we can leave DWR and bike packing specific fabrics to another video. But generally speaking, some fabrics work better than others to naturally prevent water penetrating the fabric, such as Dyneema and X-Pack with Sarah treatment. When cleaning bags, there are some general things to avoid. First, never put them in the washer or dishwasher and never add detergents to the fabric. This will not only help break down the fabric faster, but also have the potential to stain or discolor the fabric. I also like to avoid cleaning the bags with any heavier soaps that I might actually use on my frame, like dish soap. So when cleaning a bag, I start with a simple water rinse. If there is any grit, dirt, or anything on the fabric, I just try to remove it with a spray of light water. If I can't get that mud mark off, I can use some hand soap, which should get any simple stains out. I'll typically do this if the bag is older or if it no longer beads water, which is a good indicator that DWR is no longer active. Maybe more important than cleaning the fabric on a dirty trip is to inspect the Velcro, the buckles, and the zippers. These parts play an important role in the longevity and functionality of your bag, so keeping them clean is important. I did a video specifically on zippers and zipper care, and that is linked in the description below. But what I will do is I'll inspect the zippers and the buckles and make sure that they are functioning smoothly and making sure there is no grit and grime in them. I do find that Velcro holds a lot of grit and grime, which can eventually damage the frame. So it is nice to undo the Velcro and get some water on it to make sure that you release the sediment from the straps. Speaking of Velcro or lack thereof, there are a lot of direct mount frame bags in the world. What I like to do is loosen up the direct mount bolts just to make sure that there isn't any sediment stuck in between the frame and that bag that might scuff up the frame. Finally, I'll just one over the bag as a whole, make sure there are no red flags, let it dry and put it away for the next adventure. This would be a good opportunity if you wanted to add more DWR to your bike packing bags. So that's about it. That's how I clean my bike and my bike packing bags. If you have a suggestion or two, definitely leave it in the comment section below. As always, thank you all so much for watching and until next time, Pedal further.